Does that do anything? Oh, there it goes. Oh, sweet. The whole thing is changing. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to look at this beauty, the Thermal Take View 37 ARGB. But first, let me just say, you have to excuse the way I look. It is extremely cold in this garage. And it would be like five or six hours it would take for me to heat the garage for when I'm only going to be out here for about an hour. And that doesn't really justify the electric bill that it would cost for me to heat this garage up. And it does. It takes about six hours to do it. Um, it's about 30 degrees outside. So I think the actual indoor temperature in here is like uh, 50 something. So it's quite chilly. Uh, so I'm dressed like this to ensure that I stay warm. So just excuse how I look, even though I'm extremely comfortable. So anyway, let's get right into it. Here is the back of it. Notice the ventilation in the back. That's so you can put a 360 radiator on the back and allow it to uh, have airflow through it. Or you could just uh, leave it open. Um, I always recommend that you do not run the back panel on the case. 99.9% .9 of the time when your PC is facing you or whatever you never see the back side of the case and if you remove that panel that will allow a lot more airflow into your case by removing the rear panel and it's just nice to see and it's just nice to see that uh, it's it's ventilated here that's real nice um, here is the back of it Looks like your standard back power supply, motherboard, PCI, fan. I noticed that the fan uh, is this case did come with three pre installed fans 120 millimeter in the rear, and it comes with two, which you can't see. Hang on, I think I could. There we go. There they are. Comes with two. 200 millimeter thermal tape fans in the front and these are their full RGB fans so I don't even have to put fans in unless I want to put them on the radiator or something like that but it's nice to see that the that the case comes with quality branded thermal tape fans so I know that I don't have to replace these most fans that come with cases are cheap and the first thing you do is you take the case fans out and put your fans in because the fans are cheap. I won't have to do this with this case. This is a higher end case. It was 150 bucks or so plus tax. So I consider that to be on the higher end of cases. And with that, I expect a couple of features with buying a high end case. My first complaint about the case though is this is the side panel. Note the piece of plexiglass in the front. That means that these fans are only going to pull in air through the side here and the side here. But if you're like me and you can deal with modifications, this front plexiglass panel here actually comes out with just a couple push of a tabs. So you just push down right here on these two top part and then it has two bottom part tabs that you push on and there you go the whole thing comes out and then what you can do is you can reinstall this like like that but you will see these but on the bright side your case will not thermal throttle it will get so much more airflow you are talking night and day differences 
on the amount of airflow that you are going to get and the amount of cooling. I mean, you're talking at least taking probably anywhere from, I'd say 10 to 20 degrees off of your, off of your components just based on taking off of this front panel. Or if you have like a laser cutter or something, you can have it lasered engraved or cut holes in it or do whatever you want, or you can just take it off. Um, if it bothers you and you have to have the aesthetic of it, then by all means just, just pop it back in. Let's see here, which way does it go? I noticed that it goes on a certain way, the panel does. Okay, so I got the front piece back on. Now, what makes this case the view is the fact that the top part here is cut out so you can see the top part of the case, which is a nice feature because I actually would like to run the case this way or maybe this way. That way you can see all of the components inside. And sorry to disappoint you, but I do not peel this stuff off until after the build. Because if you peel this stuff off, right, and it's laying around, and it may take weeks, it may take a month, it may take a few hours to put together your case, but meanwhile, this is laying around, and if it's laying around longer than a few days, you have a very good chance of it getting scratched or dent. I couldn't tell you how many cases I've done that to. I've set this off to the side because I needed to work on the case. I didn't have a part. It took a week for it to get there. This thing sat around forever and it ended up with little scratches or a nick or I accidentally dropped something on it or whatever. So my recommendation is to leave this plexi stuff on, this protective layer. Leave that on until you are 100% done and you throw it back on the case to take it off. Uh, on the back side here, it, it's removed by these two thumb screws, right? Typical standard case thumb screws. Although, there was a plastic piece that was held on by four screws that sat right here. That also needed to be removed and able for me to slide this case off. So what I did is I just left it off and I'm just going to use the two thumb screws since that's sufficient enough to hold the, the, the panel onto the case. I don't really want to mess with that crap every time, you know. Uh, so I'm just going to deal with these two. So anyway, let's go ahead and remove this. Now this panel is one whole panel. And when you want to remove it, you have to take it push down and slide to the back with it. So the way that I will do it is I put my hand here and give it a good little slip and you should be able to just pick it up here. Uh, well, it's kind of difficult to do it from the back end. There we go, come on. Is it not all the way off? Yes. No, maybe so. Get off. What the heck? Oh, I see how that goes. Okay. So yeah, I was right. You slide it this way, and then there's like these hinges on the bottom here. So I am assuming, there it goes, like that. Anyway, those are the hinges that I was telling you about right there. There's the panel. One giant piece of plexiglass. That thing is huge, man. I'd hate to think what it would cost to replace that if you needed it to be replaced. All right, I'm just gonna set, set that down. We'll take a look at the inside of the case. Note the vertical GPU bracket, all right? That's pretty sick, actually, that it comes with the vertical GPU bracket. Although, you are kind of missing something here, if you notice. That's not going 100% work. So what they want you to do is they want you to buy the Thermaltake extension PCI Express riser that goes there and then mounts onto it. But truthfully, any of them will mount to it and stuff, but I like to keep everything branded. I got Thermaltake case, Thermaltake fans, 
I might as well run a Thermaltake GPU bracket since it's already going to fit perfectly and I don't have to worry about any type of modification or maybe it will or maybe it won't. I know that 100% fact it will fit. But that is a nice feature. Also, it doesn't exactly force you into that. You can remove it and then run the graphics card normally. But my only complaint about it is, is that you better have a really nice power supply to go in it. Because if you notice, there's no power supply cover. Your power supply will be exposed. So I recommend getting one that has RGB lights in it um, and one that's not cut, cast up in mustard. You know what I mean? You want to, you want to, if you're buying a $150 case, you're not going to put cheap parts in it to begin with. You're going to put a nice power supply, a nice motherboard, RAM, and so on. Because, well, you bought a $150 case and you're not going to put cheap crap in it. That's just usually not how it works. Especially not for me. But anyway, moving on. The entire case, I noticed, is held together by um, rivets and screws. So some of the panels, like this back piece here, that looks like it can be pulled out, but there's it's riveted too at the same certain spot yields which is okay has a uh, this right here this hard drive page that you see that can be removed you can remove this there's two screws on the bottom and there's two screws on the back plate and then that whole assembly will pop out um, I would remove it because that's probably where my reservoir is going to go when I water cool it but you may not want to, you may want to air cool it and want to keep that in there. But it, it's just a typical squeeze pull. You just squeeze it and it pulls right on out. And then when you want to put it back, you just do this vice versa. You just squeeze it, set it back in. Now I noticed a couple of things. This case has grommets, right? This is nice. This dual chain, like this dual cut grommet feature that's so, if you run a small motherboard in here, your grommets will line up with the small motherboard. And if you've run a full size motherboard, then these grommets will line up with it as well. So that way you have a nice clean channel to run your cables in and out of, which is a good feature. I really like that. It fits everything. Micro ATX, ITX, EATX, um, from the pictures that I've seen of this case, they have it all decked out. I mean, the whole thing's water cooled from top to bottom. So that will allow me to basically do whatever I want in it. Um, I was looking at the physical volume size, the actual physical space that's inside of the case to allow you to run water cooling. And this is just phenomenally much bigger than like the Cougar Panzer or like that case down there, the Aza. I don't know, that's a pretty big case, that Aza GT1. I did a review on that, check out that video too. Well, anyway, let's flip the case around. Ooh, that's, that's, ooh, don't, don't do that. Don't do what I just did. That's, that's real soft right there. You'll bend that right up. Yeah, let's flip it around. Okay, that's the back panel. Now, I've, unboxed it earlier and taken a look at it but one thing I haven't done yet is remove this back panel I have no idea how that's going to look we're just going to remove these screws let's see here this panel probably just slides off like that oh that's nice see that it has a uh, a magnetic Ooh, it has a magnetic filter see that's one of the the $150 case features that I'm talking about. Magnetic filters. That's a really good feature to have. Look at that. That's beautiful. Love that. Alright, so alright, I expected this. Since it comes with their ARGB fans, I assumed that it was going to come with a thermal take fan controller. And they did not disappoint. They did. And it looks like they have another one one Two, two more plug heads on it for you to run off of. It looks like it runs off of SATA. And then, of course, you got your standard USB 3 and your audio and your power. Uh, what is this? This is... Okay, that's your actual power reset. Huh. Oh, look at that. 
Look at that, there's a big grommet at the bottom here. You see that right there, that big grommet? Ooh, that's nice. That's for you to pass all your main cables through and run them up through this way. That's a nice feature, grommet in the back. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a case that had a rear grommet that was cut out specifically for your power supply cables to run through. That right there is a nice feature. Can y'all see that? See it right there, the grommet at the bottom? Looks like you got some uh, some SSD cages out here. Let's see here, what, two, four, six. Wow, this thing will hold a lot of storage. I mean, right here it's claiming that it will hold six SSDs for you. I don't know why you would want to run that many, but it apparently there's enough space here to run that. That's nice. Oh my God, look, there's even more. There's, there's more. So I could put three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 SSDs. I could put 12 drives just in the back. And then on the front, there's, there's three more for, holy jeez, man. You could put a lot of storage in this thing. Good God. And I love the openness to it how there's plenty of holes and there's plenty of tie downs for your zip ties. There's plenty of pass throughs. That's beautiful. I mean, look, there's a pass through to the bottom. They even got pass throughs to the top. That's nice. That's a nice feature. I like that. Word. All right, well, I'm gonna take the camera. I'm gonna walk around. We're gonna get a more in depth look at it. All right, so once again, this is the back. And that's that rear pass-through grommet I was talking to you about a few minutes ago. That's just awesome. That's really nice. And then the SSD plates here. It looks like it could hold three each. And there are three, four of those. That's crazy. And the back passes. There is their controller board. Their thermal take controller board. And it runs just off of SATA. Seda powered. Make sure to subscribe. Leave a like. Y'all know what to do. Let's take a look at the front. There's those side. Whoa, don't fall. There's those side ventilations I was talking about. Um, I don't know if I like that. The power button, though. Check out the power button. You hear that? That's a nice feel. Like, I like that power button. On the front, you got USB 3.0, 2.0 audio, headphone, no, that's a headphone, and then that's a microphone, and then right there says RGB on it, so that must be what controls the RGB out through the case. That's kind of cool. All right, let's go around on this side here. Let's see here. All right, let's take a quick look on the inside. You got your two big 200 millimeter fans. And look, there's also indexes here to where you could run a 140 or a 120 fan in here. Now, there is no support at the top, if you haven't noticed that. There's no support at the top for a radiator. So you really only have the choice of running the radiator in here or in the front. Um, because the power supply would go there and you wouldn't want to run it on the ground. That would be kind of goofy. So it really only gives you two options, there or there, which that's okay with me because I think once you take that cage out and you put that there, I think that will look, that'll look pretty sick. Because if you look how on their case, let's see here. Well, I guess it doesn't show you that, does it? Hmm, dang. I don't think there's any more pictures on here. Uh, let's see here. What's it here? Built in 2x200 meter, 125, 5 volt RGB fans, direct control with 27 illumination modes. Wow, this thing has 27 modes on it. Illumination sync with motherboard RGB software. And then there's all the badges that it's uh, compatible with. Let's see here. Here's the specifications in case anybody 
want it to know you can just pause the video you can just pause it and take a look at this stuff I'm not going to spend too much time on it I normally don't in my reviews I just kind of go over it so anyway this I am not going to build in this case today unfortunately um, I haven't I haven't got the vision yet when it comes time for me to build a case I I got to see it in my mind um, I have to know what I want it to look like and then I can basically bring it to life like uh, when I was building that computer I could see that in my mind and that's exactly what I got same with the cardboard PC when I built the cardboard PC I could see that in my mind and that's what I built this one is a blank canvas and I haven't decided what to do yet although you know me I am going to build in it this will be my new personal rig once again um, I'm updating to a higher platform which was probably gonna cost me another couple of grand but hey that's part of it and it all starts with the case hmm how do you remove that let's see here it looks like there's two screws on the back and that just pops out okay filtered in the bottom see that there's a filter down there you can see it wiggling that's I expect that ooh look at that hey if you're the verge um, these right here are supposed to stop your power supply from shorting out on the case they have nothing to do with vibration ah, I'm just joking these have nothing to do with electrifying your case or grounding it this is actually meant for vibration your power supply sits on these um, on these foam dampeners and they help with the vibrating plus they give it a little bit more space to suck in more air for you which is a nice feature you know you can't go wrong with that but uh, according to the verge those are there to keep your power supply from grounding out which what an idiot seriously I hope they lost subscribers over that because they just completely shot themselves in the foot with that video um, seriously horrible but anyway um yeah i just thought i wanted to show you guys this case real quick i hope you guys like it make sure to subscribe and leave a like and as always see y'all in the next one look forward to this we are going to do a build in this um i don't know should i turn the fans on real quick yeah let's turn the fans on does that do anything oh there it goes Oh, sweet. The whole thing is changing. Wow, that is... That is a little button. How do they expect me to mess with that? You almost need, like, a pin or something, because the... The hole is very little, and it's, like, shallow. There we go. Blue. Blue. Oh man, that is too cool looking. I had nab it. I knew I said I wasn't going to take the plastic off, but it just, it looks, it looks like crap with half of the knife showing and the other half being all faded. So I had to remove it to show it to you guys. But yeah, that's, that's how it's going to look. Man, this case is going to be a lot of fun to build in. So y'all need to subscribe. So you guys don't miss it when I build in this thing. And if you're new, check out some of the other videos. Like me building that one. Or me building that one. Or heck, even me building that one. Or me building that one. Or even when I built the other one. That one right there. So, anyway. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Hope you guys like my review of the Thermaltake View 37 ARGB. See you guys in the next one.